takes three things to make a trail drive, cattle, horses, and men. And some say two, because a man without a horse is no man at all. There are mornings when I think a horse without a man would be better. I should know men by now, but I keep learning. I'm Gil Favor, trail boss. Which bone you got any wax for this string? Yeah, you figure to ride into town to visit my brother while I look for us? You can't have a twin brother. He just plumb can't. Why don't you tell the truth, Wishbone? You're just looking for an afternoon in town. Now, don't you irritate me, Roddy Yates. It's hard enough for me to leave the herd, what with much of all tied up in bandages and slings, and me not sure you'll get your supper. Pete, do you believe Wishbone is a brother? It's kind of stretching it to think the good Lord would make another one like him after making his first mistake. If you got a brother, why can't he come here and visit you so we can all meet him? My brother wrote me to meet him in Slide Hill. Well, I don't question it. An important man like him can't always figure time enough to go visit him. Well, what's so important about him? T.J. Wishbone? Well, now, that's an important name. Politics, business, law, medicine, you name it, and he's important in it. Is he a uh, human? There's not a living thing, man or beast, that he's afraid of. Why, he can outshoot, outride, outguess any man I ever seen. That includes me, even if I do say so. But, uh, can he cook as good as you can? Well, now, there was a time. <laughs> What those saddles? Howdy. You uh, get to Wishbone. Head him off till I can break in the news. All right. That's the funny thing. I can't even see where he's been hit. You better go on and bury me anyway. What'd you say? I said bury me anyway. Bury you? If you don't, they will. Oh. Quince, get some shovels. You all right? I'm fine, but them Indians ain't going to leave till they're sure I'm dead and buried. All right. We'll uh, put him over under there under those trees. CJ! Wishbone! That's my brother, brother, Mr. Favor! That's my twin brother I haven't seen in six years! Who killed him, Mr. Favor? Show him! Listen to me, will you, Wishbone? Who killed my brother, Mr. Favor? Show him to me! I ain't dead. They're just burying me. Really, him speaking, Mr. Favor? That's right. Now turn your back before the Indians see you. and come around here so the Indians can't see you. Will you say a few words, Wish? Oh, me? Oh, what can I say? He's always a good brother, a good man. Never did a willful wrong, lived his life upright and decent. I don't know what to say. Why don't you just say that? Better keep talking. He's still up there. I don't know what to say. Tell him how good looking I am. 
Well, we was always good looking, both of us. Tell him about my character. Oh. Like I was saying, Lord, he was a good man. Everybody liked him. And he could ride a horse like nothing you ever saw. He was always good to women and children and widows and especially widows. And fast on the draw. Oh, Lord, how he could draw. But only in the cause of righteousness. Are they still there, Mr. Favor? Yeah. You better start shoveling. They'll never leave. All right, speed him in. And uh, bless this drive, old Lord. You don't have to do it like you mean it. Favor? Yeah, all clear. Well, now we buried you, little brother. Maybe you could tell us what this is all about. Well, I, I was visiting those Indians, just plying the trade. <laughs> plying your trade? Well, a lawyer's no tradesman. Statesmen don't have a trade. You got a trade? I'm a taker. A tanker? Sure. Didn't you hear my horse a clanging when I rode in? I'm a tinker. Important in politics, business, and law. Well, if he's a tinker, you can be sure he's the best tinker you'll ever run into. Does seem to be an unlikely trade to be plying among the Indians. Oh, well, a lot of Indians nowadays have iron pots and pans. Sometimes I fix a gun, an old wolfer's trap. It makes a nice change. You know, a lot of Indians nowadays are real friendly and hospitable. Yeah, it was mighty well hospitable, the way they was chasing you. <laughs> well, you see, little brother, the chief's sister wanted me to marry her. <laughs> <laughs> and prettier than Pocahontas, too, I'll bet. Oh, you lose, little brother. Why, she was older than that hill, not a tooth in her head. Well, I'll still bet, knowing how modest you are. all your stuff in burlap so as not to signal them Indians. And you'll be needing this. Why, thank you kindly, little brother. Seems like we ain't hardly had time to visit at all, little brother. You still ain't told me what you've been doing all these years. Oh, this and that, one thing and another. You know how it goes. Hey, T.J., we'd be glad to have you go along with us for a bit. Why, that's right nice of you, Mr. Favor. But like I was saying, little brother, I'm kind of pressed for time. There's a, there's a widow lady up near Slide Hill. She looks for me about this time of year to get her parts in shape for a big party she always gives on her birthday. I can't rightly disappoint her. Ooh, but a day or two, we put her off that long. Oh, she's a colonel's widow, Mr. Favor. You can't keep a colonel's widow waiting. <laughs> He'd just been waiting for it to get dark in case any of them Indians are around. When am I going to see you again? Oh, you'll know when I'm in the neighborhood again. Too bad he couldn't stay around. That was nice meeting him, Wishbone. Was it something I don't understand? If he's as good as you say he is. Why is he a tinker? Because he wants to be a tinker. Uh, I wasn't properly introduced to him, Wish. Uh, what'd you say his name was? People call him T.J. T.J. Well, what, what do you call him? I call him Little Brother, same as he calls me. Nothing, Chi, my son. So much the better.
We bring good news, Chi. You have not brought the manner of parts. He is dead. You kill him, even as he stumbled into the camp of trail drivers. You speak like a fool, Hancho. How do you know he was dead? Did you go into the camp of the trail drivers? If Hancho speaks like a fool, it is perhaps because the great Chi takes him for a fool. We watched the camp of the white men until they dug a grave and buried the mender of pots. Hey. You saw this too? This I saw, my brother. Did he speak to these men before he died? He could not. He fell from his horse as I shot him. And when these men turned his body over, their leader sent at once for men to dig a grave. These men, which way do they go with their cattle? To the north. They follow the trail they call Sedalia. It would be well to watch so long as they remain in the valley. Diary. Yes, my brother. I we watch them. Should they change their course, ride to their leader and tell him Chi will not allow him on the west slope of Mount Hanna. Tell him it is a sacred time for the tribes of the west slope. We want no small skirmishes. When the trouble comes, it must be great trouble. Go, Kaiwi. Yes, brother. Morning sun find you well? You mock me, Chi. Mock the great one Kawa? No. I am concerned because you refuse food. Play no more of these games with me, Chi. I grow weary of your childishness. You think the mender of pots will come and rescue you? He is dead one Kawa. Tancho and ten others saw him placed in his grave. It does not matter what words he spoke with you when he found the way to your teepee, for he talked to no one before he was killed. It saddens me that others die because of me. Why don't you kill me and finish it? Kill you? Kill one Kawa? You think I wish to destroy myself? You will kill me, Chi, one way or another. Those who cry for treaties and peace cannot blame me if you starve to death. Company again, Wishbone. Your brother's back. Little brother!
somebody chasing you again, little brother? It's that widow woman. Let me get in the wagon. She's gone. Well, she's bound to know you're here. Now, now you know you can't hide from a woman. You might as well stay and face up to it. Mr. Wishbone? Yes, ma'am. Don't tell me there are two of you. Which one of you calls himself a tinker? It's me, ma'am. Do you call that an honest morning's work? Don't look like it's been mended. And this, and this. Oh, I'm sure my brother can explain, ma'am. I paid him three dollars to fix them. And when I got back, he was gone, and every one of them leaking just as bad as before. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I thought I'd mended them real good. What kind of a tinker are you, anyway? I'd be real happy to return your money, ma'am. You said three dollars. Uh, and one more for the strain on your horse. All right. I want to apologize for my brother, ma'am. I don't know what made him treat you like that, but I mean to find out. Especially such a fine figure of a woman as you are. Too bad you weren't the one to take up tinkering. <laughs> you lead an interesting life, little brother. I'll pay you back the three dollars as soon as I get strength enough to open my war bag. Well, I hope you find the strength to explain a few other things. Seeing as how you're not a tinker, just what are you, little brother? Not now, little brother. You never saw such a tuckered out man as I am. Well, all right, get in the wagon and I'll call you for supper. Thanks, little brother. There's a spring on the other side of the valley, Wishbone. Mr. Faber says, taste this. See if you have to refill the water barrel. Iron. Tell him we're not hard pressed enough to worry about it. Do you always have Indians in your crew? Indian? He's not an Indian, he's a drover. An Indian's an Indian. The way Mr. Faber sees it, a drover is a drover. Besides, we not only got one Indian, we got two. Blue Deer and Fleetfoot. Hard to find two better men. Get over there. DJ, fixing right on, or you want me to tie your horse to chuck wagon? He's staying till he gets a little sleep and a few meals under him. Mr. Wishbone, he snores just tonight. like you. Yes, and if you wake him up, you'll answer to me. He mighty well needs his sleep. And I mean to see he gets it. Buffalo gal, won't you come on tonight? Oh! Hey, Wish, when I was riding in, I found a patch of wild onions just over that rise. And while you were riding in, making this great discovery, it didn't occur to you to stop and pick up a few. Well, when I'm cook, I will. Well, I suppose the men are entitled to a little flavoring in their stew. Nothing like onions. 
Come on, let's get him. Would you like to ride, Greybeard? Tell me what you said to the leader of the herd, and you shall ride. Said to him? Perhaps you would like to be buried again. Who the Indian buries stays buried. You got the wrong man. He's back there dead and buried, like you said. You're like all white men. You think it is easy to fool red man? <laughs> She will know how to make you talk. I sent Wishbone over there to pick some wild onions. All right, little brother. I'm all right. How's Mushy? You all right? Who killed the Indian? Mushy did, and I do appreciate it. Thanks. Well, why didn't you let my little brother come after me? Well, but Mr. Wishbone, you told me not to wake him up for anything. Were there other Indians around, little brother? Well, he talked about taking me to somebody named Chi, but. The way he said it, I don't figure he meant anybody close by. At least not in right handy. You know, little brother, he thought I was you. What do you know about these Indians, Pete? They're nothing special. But I know there are a lot healthier things to do than kill Indians when you're in Indian territory. That's the word. I want everyone alerted for trouble. Double the guard and night watch. Add a couple extra men on drag now. Right. Roddy, you see that he gets buried. I run some cattle through here. Wipe out the marks of the grave.
Tell me, little brother, what kind of trouble are you in? You know as much about it as I do, little brother. You still want me to believe they sent near a dozen Indians after you, all on account of that chief's sister? You know how Indians are. They've got different ideas than we have about some things. Well, that Indian that thought I was you, he didn't say anything about any chief's sister. All he wanted to know was what I, meaning you, told Mr. Faber. Now, what did he think that I, meaning you, could have told Mr. Faber? Believe me, little brother, if I had anything to tell you, I'd tell you. Do this. Well, here it is, Wish. Just what much you said it was. Oh, well, you're a pretty good barber, T.J. Yeah, according to Wishbone, there's nothing you're not good at. Now, there's not one thing that I told you about my little brother that isn't true, Rowdy Yates. party, it ain't anymore. It might be comforting to have the Army around for a few days, Mr. Faber. I'd be glad to go up and talk to him if you like. I was in the Army myself once. Might even be some old friends of mine in that detail. Obliged to you, T.J. I told you he knew important people. Like I said, his friends. Get Bob! Yeah, friends. Hold your horses! Corporal! Yes, sir. I'm Sergeant Gregory, D Company, 4th Cavalry. Your favor. Well, looks like. Cavalry come just in the nick of time again. I think that was just a hunting party this hour of day. But if you do have any trouble, you'll have that idiot tinker to thank for it. Well, now, excuse me, Sergeant, but that's not a way to talk about an ex-army man who... You must be his brother. I am. And you can be sure when he was in the army, he distinguished himself in a position of importance. Don't, little brother. Oh, he distinguished himself, all right. By being drummed out of the army. Mr. Wherever he is, there's trouble. He goes around fooling with the Indians, and the first thing you know, we got a war on our hands. I ain't surprised to see him around at a time like this. We've been pushing a herd and ain't had time for the local gossip. What do you mean, a time like this? You don't know about Wonkawa? This is our first time through this territory, Sergeant. The Indians look up to him the way we look up to a saint. He brought the northern and southern tribes together for the first time in 10 years. Swan Cowell was supposed to sign a peace treaty for them with the army. But he disappeared. Change his mind? Headquarters don't think so. Got a bunch of hotheads against him. Young bucks with nothing in their heads but earning a coup. Showing off. Now, we think they have Juan Cowell hit out so that he can't sign that peace treaty. Well, instead of being mad at my poor brother who never meant any harm, why don't you go out and rescue this Juan Cowell? Even if we knew where he was, we wouldn't be able to go in. That's just what they're waiting for. When she spots us coming, he'll kill Wonkawa. Put up a token fight and tell the tribes we killed him. It'll be another 10 years before anyone can get them to talk peace again. All right, Corporal, man up the men. Yes, sir. You 
You better pray that we get that treaty signed. Or there won't be any trail that's safe. Not Sedalia, not Chisholm, not Goodnight, not any of them. Good luck to you. Cheer up, Wish. It ain't your fault your brother's the way he is. Look, Wishbone, we, we don't hold it against you if your brother isn't all he said he was. You gotta admit, they had a right to be sore at him. My brother's too honorable to contradict the Army. You don't have to keep defending him, Wish. We like you the way you are, not the way your brother ain't. As a matter of fact, we like you in spite of what he is. Oh, I know you mean well, but you all got six left hands when it comes to saying something nice to a person. Besides, you're all wrong about my brother. You ain't seen him break a horse yet. Or play a hand of poker. I win from you, just as if you were working for me for nothing. Might look better to the Indians if you sat in, Mr. Favor. There any out there? Well, if you don't mind working for nothing. What about you, T.J.? When are you gonna sit in? Me? I'm gonna wait and play the winner. Well, you gotta wait no more. They picked me clean. You can deal. Little hey, brother, can you lend me $20? Well, sure. Little brother, lend me another 20. Well, go on, Wishbone. You claim he's a better poker player than you anyway. Yeah, what do you got to lose? You want to lend it to him, you do it. I'm sorry, little brother. I'm just not fixed to hold out against the whole mint. You wanted 20? Thank you, Mr. Favor. And I'm just going to have to raise you. Just called with uh, three hooks. Beats me. That's enough for me. Next time you want to borrow money, you buy it from me. Mr. Favor, here's a deed to a small ranch in Missouri. Oh, forget it, T.J. I'd take it kindly if you'd hold this deed for security till I can repay the loan. I said to forget it. Will this cover it, Mr. Favor? Yeah. Yeah, that cover it just fine. Thank you, sir. Sorry, Mr. Favor. Oh, don't apologize for your brother, Wish. You'd make a better poker player than you and me put together. Pete? There's enough moon out. Turn the herd west. So there's north. Yeah, I know. We'll go west. 
50 miles uh, out of our way in the dark, over country I haven't even scouted yet. <laughs> no reason for it. Well, you all of a sudden making up the reasons for things? Well, why not just have us go all the way to California while we're at it? When I decide that's best, we will. You are the leader. My chief sends you a message. The trail to Missouri is to the east. You must take your herd that way. The grazing's better here. The west slope of Mount Hannah is sacred. It is forbidden. You are to take your cows to the east. Anything else? You are to give us the mender of pots. You tell your chief I won't be able to do either of the things he asks. She expected such a refusal. It gives you one hour to change your mind. Boss. Hours a long time. Tell you, Chief, I wouldn't want to be wasting it, changing my mind. I will tell him. He is a man who can enjoy a joke. You'll have to do what he asks, Mr. Favor. Well, you won't be the Indians. You agreed to help me. I didn't agree to let you kill yourself. Well, what kind of trouble is my brother fixing to cook up for us now? Go away, little brother. Go fix breakfast. Can't you see Mr. Favor and I are having a private talk? Well, there's nothing private about getting yourself killed. Now, what's going on, Mr. Favor? Why are you and T.J. having private and serious talk? Well, you know darn well, in spite of all I bragged about him, T.J. ain't, well, just can't always be counted on. You do what your brother says, Wishbone. I can't order you to do what's got to be done, and you can't keep me from doing my chores. What's to be gained by your getting tortured and killed? Well, like I said, Mr. Faber, it's up to you whether you help me, my way or not. But you'll have to shoot me to keep me from going. Wishbone, where you going? Little brother! Well, he settled our argument, Mr. Faber. And we won't get him back unless you do what you promised when I was going, instead of... instead of that Jasper brother of mine. Pete, Roddy, you start turning the herd east. Well, what are you gonna do, let him keep Wishbone? No, I'll need ten volunteers to come with me after Wish. What, to help Wishbone? The only trouble you'll have is getting volunteers to stay with the herd. I don't suppose you'd take me with you, would you, Mr. Faber? Uh, Mr. Wishbone, he's kind of special to me. All right, grab your horse. Pete, you and Roddy will be shorthanded, but I don't expect the Indians to bother you here. Let's go! Answer me, old fool. He cannot hear you. still refuse to tell us what you know? I'll make a deal with you. You tell me what I'm supposed to know, and I'll tell it back to you. He is no use to us. Kill him. Cut him down. My brother Cheek grows soft. The time has come for us to kill one Kawa. The bearded one will be found dead beside him, and the tribes will know that the white man killed their beloved chief. The great Chi has wisdom. Thank you. 
Pancho, get the manner of pots. If there's a trap, let him be the one caught in it. Hop, old man! The bearded one cannot walk any straighter than he can talk. Friend one Kawa is in that teepee. Go and meet him. Sure glad to see you, but I wish you weren't here. Whew. Place sure could stand in Aaron Alley. But Mr. Favor, I didn't come alone. Huh? I didn't. Oh. Where's Wankawa? Wankawa. Some of my men are seeing that he safely gets to Fort Liberty. He's got to sign a peace treaty there. Aren't you? Huh? There's no one here. Why did you remain behind? Are you such a fool? No, not quite such a fool. I come to get my cook, but of course I didn't come alone. Thomas Jefferson! Throw down your weapons. Did you see that, Mr. Favor? He's even better than I said he was, and not one of that mangy crew here to see that everything I said about him was true. You all right, sir. Tie him up. I promised I'd deliver him to General Wingate. Mount up the men, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Where 
Where'd you get that uniform? At the fort when I picked up the details. Little brother, don't you realize what the punishment is for impersonating an officer? Congratulations, Captain. It all worked out just like you figured it. Captain? You mean... You mean them bars are real? Of course. Captain Thomas Jefferson Wishbone, Company D, 4th Cavalry. That's right, little brother. Mr. Faber, I'd be obliged to you if you wouldn't mention to the men that you heard me say what the meaning of T.J.'s initials is. Oh, you're afraid if they find out what uh, T.J. stands for, they might figure out that your initials, G.W., stand for uh, George Washington? Now, you don't know that for certain. You're just guessing. Now, why couldn't you act acted like that back at the herd instead of making me out a bragging fool? It was those Indian drovers you carry along with you. They could have been cheese men, whether you believed in them or not. Well, maybe that gives you reason to act like an idiot, but it don't give the Army no call to come in and humiliate you the way they did. That's the only way they could get my orders to me. Looks like you got an answer for everything. Well, any man that's got to pull himself up in the world with the seat of the pants the way you did, if you got yourself a little spread, I don't see why you have to lose it just because you can't play poker the way you think you can. So, Mr. Faber, if you give him back his deed, well, you can take what he owes you out of my wages. It wasn't a deed wish. It was the captain's military orders. That's how I knew what needed to be done. Oh. Well, are you coming back to the herd so I can show the man I wasn't lying about you? I'd sure like to, little brother, but I'm on duty. Thanks again, Mr. Faber. Driving a trail herd north, each delay means getting the herd to market that much later. Days, sometimes even half days, count. A herd that can beat its schedule has time to fatten up at the end of the drive, bring the best price. But sometimes it seems the good Lord is on the side of the buyers. Nobody else could turn streams into swollen rivers that take three days to cross instead of one. I don't try to understand it. Mostly I just go along with whatever turns up. Gil Favor, Trail Boss. Think any of them got this far out? Uh, maybe. They'll be scattered pretty good when they hit the dry ground. Let's check that draw down there. Wait a minute, you hear balling? I sure do, coming from down there. Let's go. You look at that. What is it? It's a Mustang trap. They must have wandered in and tripped the gate. Somebody trying to steal our beef? No, it's a Mustanger's trap. They use them to catch wild horses. They shouldn't leave it like that, though. No telling what's going to wander in it. Come on. I've never seen one yet that was any good. They'll open the gate? No, I'm going to tear this down. They should have done it themselves when they were through with it. Well, how do you know they are? You don't see a camp around here, do you? Come from up there. Hey, what are you shooting at us for? You get away from that fence! Sounds like a kid. Keep talking to him. I'm going to circle around behind. You hear me? Get away! Those are 
There are steers trapped in here. We got a right to get them. You got no right to bust down the fence. There's a gate. Now you get your steers and get pronto. Why? This here's open range. You don't own it. Who says we gotta go? This rifle does. Now get. Hey, Teddy, it's a girl. What difference does that make? I can shoot as good as you or right as good as you. Yeah. And I could fight as good as you if I got a fair start. Do you want to see? Who says she's a girl? Looks more like an it. To you me. shut up. Regular little cat amount, aren't you? Kind of pretty, too. <laughs> Cut that out. Well, you would be if you had a better disposition. What's your name, girl? None of your business. Hey, what do you want to know that for? Well, so I, uh, I'll know what to call you. That way I won't have to call you something I made up, like uh, Effie Lou or Esmeralda. My name's Willie. Willie? <laughs> that ain't no name for a girl. It is so. It's mine. That's what Pa calls me. Yeah, well, what's your real name? None of your business. Your Pa Mustanger? That neither. Somebody shoots at me, I'd like to know who it is, Willie. I got a right to shoot at you. This is your trap then, huh? And you was busting it. Yeah, well, get our cattle out, that's all. It ain't my fault you can't keep track of your own steers. Besides, you didn't have to bust it. Well, maybe not. I'm sorry about that. We thought it was an old one. Somebody went away and left. You shouldn't leave a thing like that without watching it. I was watching it. Just getting here, making my rounds. You got any more of those things around here? Six or seven. Well, that's just fine. They can snare a whole raft of strays. You got a big herd coming this way? Yeah, we're going to Sedalia, Missouri. Hey, where you going? Pa, I gonna like a big herd coming through here. Hey, well, where's your camp? None of your business. Yeah, well, I'm just liable to make it my business. Looks like a girl. That's supposed to be funny. Not a bit funny, Mr. Favor. Getting shot at never is. Do you have any trouble? Yeah, and it ain't over yet. Here comes more of the same. Who's the boss here? I am cursed. You know me? You don't remember? The K-Bar down in the Nacogdoches. Favor. And Joe Misley's friend. Your boy Jake's friend, too. You growed up some. Like Jake, I guess. No. Jake quit growing. He's dead. Oh. Struck down by a killer horse a few years back. A wild black stallion still running this range. Sorry. Jake was... was all right. But his pa wasn't. What you want here? What kind of men you got, Favor, to break down a man's fences? Some of our steers were caught in that Mustang trap. I thought it was an old one. You got no cause to bust them up anyways. Even if they was old, it could have been used again. They take a long time to build. Get get caught him, they trample themselves to death trying to get out. That don't bother me none. This ain't no cattle range. Maybe not, but there's a cattle trail through here. You build traps, you ought to leave a man around to warn people coming through. I ain't got that many hands. I travel light, you remember. 
Yeah, I remember. You heading for the Red? And beyond. You be sure to go straight on through. Don't tally around here. He's got traps set all around. Well, then you'd better post men. Come along and show us yourself. Because any of my herd gets caught, I burn the traps. You better see nothing like that happens. Or I'll be back looking for you, Favor. And you might not like that so good. You'll remember. Being Jake's friend don't mean nothing, does it? I don't care about friends. I ain't got any. Now you go see to your steers. You see you don't try to stop me. Or I make trouble too. <laughs> Nice to meet up with old friends, huh, boss? He looks mean enough to get along with the devil himself. But it takes meanness to be a mustanger. He's mean, all right. When he fights, there ain't no rules. Sounds like you've had the pleasure. I have. We'd better get moving. We gotta cross the red before it floods. What about the mustang traps? You go back, pick up two men, and scout on ahead for them. Hardy. Pete, you ride on ahead and scout the river crossing. hard north and west of here. Flooded? It's the biggest swimming hole you ever saw and running fastest. Can't get across. Well, we can get across, all right, maybe half a herd. I didn't think it'd be so bad this time of year. However, there's a better ford a few miles to the east. The water spreads out and there's not in much current. We can make it there all right, but it's gonna lose us two days. All right. How do we go, down river? We can't, it's too rugged. We'll have to go up through that pass in the hills. Well, it's not bad that way. We can make it easy. It won't be easy. Why not? Jed Karst's range. That mustanger. Wonder how big an outfit he's got. <laughs> Any more traps? No sign of any yet. It'll be a long day getting them through that pass. It can't be helped. You're not afraid of that car, are you, boss? I'm afraid of that flood. Look up there. Got him too close. Cut him off. <laughs> well, they're turning. The girl doing it. Hey. 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 This ain't the way to the red. It's flooded, we can't get across. Could have told you that. Well, why didn't you? No business of mine. But your being here is. We're just going up through that pass and a few miles beyond to the other river ford. Now, we're skirting your traps, watching out for them. We're not giving you any trouble. We don't want any from you. Like running horses at us. Yeah, and don't tell us that was an accident. You can't always tell where a Mustang will run to. You could have headed him off any time, just like the girl did. I'll run him where I like. This is Mustang range, the best I've ever seen. And you ain't gonna spoil it for me. I told you, we're not gonna spoil anything. You think you could drive a big herd through without spoiling things, scaring them off? Well, you ain't gonna do it. We'll be through in just a few hours. 
You don't go through the pass. Why not? It's blocked. Blocked? How? I blocked it, that's how. I got my big trap there and my camp. Nobody goes through the pass. A herd of cattle could uh, bust their way through. You just want to try that. Just try. I start something, Favor. I like to finish it. You think he means it? You never heard anybody mean anything more. said it, all right. We can't get a herd through there unless he lets us. Or unless we force it through. He's got no right to block that pass, no right at all. Well, they'll probably all be killed. There must be some other way. What way? A flood crossing? A wait days without grass? Well, the old man must have a price. His price is a fight. That's what he wants. Why? Because it's me. I take it you don't want to talk to her. I don't. I don't want to go crawling to him asking for nothing, especially something I shouldn't have to ask for. But I'll go try and talk sense to him tonight. It's getting dark. Bed the herd down. I'm uh, looking for Jed Kirst. I didn't come to fight. I just want to talk to him. I'm his wife. How'd he do? I'm Gil Favor. This is Roddy Yates. I remember my son talking of a Gil Favor. I welcome his friend. Well, thank you. He is up there on the hill, looking. Always looking. For what? You can go up, talk to him. Thank you. You tell fortunes, ma'am? I am a gypsy. Did he lose his mama? We find him out on the range. Their mothers leave him. We don't know why. Yeah? We take care of them until they're old enough to be turned loose. That was uh, pretty fancy riding you did this afternoon. Especially for a girl. Is this the young man you spoke to me about? Well, I'm sorry about that. This afternoon, ma'am. It's just that I thought she was a boy, the way she's dressed and carrying a rifle and all. I didn't hurt her feelings or nothing. Perhaps it is as well you did. It is time she understood she is a woman, not a man, not another son. Yeah, I think 
of herself as another son? Well, that wouldn't be right. It wouldn't even be natural, would it? No. It is not natural. Christ! Your favor. I know. I seen you right in. You get any ideas, there's a gun in my hand. I came to talk. I don't want to hear it. You never did want to listen to anybody, did you? Um, there's no reason for us to make a battle out of this. Look, you could take down a section of fence, let us through. It would just take a few hours. We'd be real careful, put everything back just the way it was. I'll even pay you if I gotta. Listen. What? Horses. That's only the wind. Look! Ain't nothing out there. You ain't even been listening to me. He's out there. You just can't see him. Not many can. Him? The night horse. Watching me, waiting for me. Night horse? You mean a black? Black as death. He runs by night, stays hidden by day. The black devil. He's the one that really killed Jake. But it was really me he wanted to kill. It still does. Horse don't carry hate that way. Don't they? Any horse will kill if he's cornered and scared. The wilder he is, the meaner he'll get, but ain't no killer horses. Maybe this ain't a horse like you've ever seen before. Maybe it ain't no horse at all. Maybe it's just the wind and the moonlight. Ah, uh, he's out there, all right. Someday I'll get him. Someday it'll be him or me. Karst. I ain't gonna let you through. What do you want from me? I figure you know that. See me dead? Same thing you want of me. I nearly did see it once. If it hadn't been for your boy Jake stopping you, saving my life. It was you come for me, remember? To kill me. It took Joe Misley two days to die. Two days and nights of misery and agony. You didn't want to finish him outright. You shot him in the stomach so it'd take two days to die. And a gunfighter man can miss his mark. But not you. Joe was your boy's friend. He couldn't believe you wanted to kill him. But you knew you did. The law didn't hold me. That's why I come for you. And you got beat. I was green like Joe. I'm not green anymore. I ain't gonna let you through. <laughs> Christ. We could settle this reasonable. Any way you say. Guns, barehanded, knives, bull whips, you name it. I like it best barehanded, you'll remember. What makes you so afraid of everybody? Afraid? Otherwise, you wouldn't have to beat them. Make them afraid of you. You're gonna fight? That's what I thought. I'm coming through in the morning. Want to sit down? sitting next to me? I'm sorry about teaching you about being a girl. I can do anything a man can do. I can ride and work and shoot. And I can drink, too. Do you want to see? Enough. And I can swear as good as any man. Do you want to hear? Enough. Enough, Philomena. Now you will be quiet. Wilhelmina, is that her real name? I gave it to her. I liked it, but she hates it. Maybe she's right. Is it so bad? Well, uh... Oh, it's not that. It's... 
Oh. What'd the Mustanger say? He said no. Any reason? You don't need a reason. Let's get out of here. Wait. Perhaps there is something you can do. A way for you both. No. There is something he wants more than any other thing. That night horse he keeps talking about? It is real. It's beautiful. The biggest, most powerful stallion you ever saw. And we're going to capture him. Pawn me. He will let you through if he can get the black horse. And he can do that with your help. He doesn't seem like the sort of take help to me. Many times we have almost captured the night horse, but he escaped. You have many men. It would be possible. And then it would be over. This is the night horse's range. Maybe if you could help us, we could capture him quickly. If you come through here with force, many men will die who should not die. What's to guarantee if we help him that'll let us through? I will be your guarantee. Tell Karst I'll be here at sunup. All the men I can spare from the herd. Be somewhere in these hills to the south with this band, between here and the next water. We'll split equal. You take your men and circle west, I'll go east. Mm -hmm. Now don't chase anything till you get to the next water and turn back, even if you see them. You want to push them up here towards your trap? Your herd will help. It's blocking them from going down that way toward the red. We'll get there and start turning back what we do. You spread your men wide, half a circle, maybe a half a mile apart, but keep in sight. And come back slow, squeezing in and watching. For what exactly? He'll have a string of mares, maybe two dozen more than any other. But he's tricky. He'll hide him in a drawer or a thicket. But if you're careful, you'll spot him. How can we be sure it's him? You'll know him if you see him. He's big and he's black. And you'll want him, too. Want to own him. What about signals? Just one. Two shots fast if you see him. We'll close in on the sound. All right. Uh, one thing. Just because you're doing this don't mean it'll change me. If this don't work, if we don't get them, you don't go through. Uh, hello there, Miss Wilhelmina. You. You fixing to go on a Mustang, huh? Now, that isn't exactly proper activity for a young lady, is it? You shut up or you'll be sorry. Especially a pretty little filly should be wearing calico. I warned you I could fight. Do you want more? That next water Karst was talking about, huh? All right, we'll string out. First man will wait here. Ken, that'll be you. Wait until you get an arm signal from the man on your left. Always keep him in sight. Don't get too far apart. Looks like Karst's men. Good. We'll space it just right. You drop off here. Keep me in sight.
is your daughter here. Heard any words? I guess I'm numb all over. You lie still for a minute. You'll be all right. You'll be all right, Willie. Takes more than a little bump to bother you. Well, she's had worse spills than that. You oughtn't let her try a thing like that. Well, stallion, that's strong. The horse. Where is he? You lie still a minute. Bring in the mares. Feel. I don't think I can walk. Oh? I'll carry you. Well, she'll be all right in this car. She just got roughed up, falling off her horse. Again? Put her in bed. I'll go get something warm. All right. You get some rest, and you'll feel all right in the morning. Minus a few aches and bruises. Rowdy, I'm sorry I hit you. Oh, well, that's all right. You pack a pretty good wallet for a girl. Oh, there, I said it. That's all right. I don't mind. I don't know why, but I don't. Well, that's an improvement. Besides, there's no use minding something you can't help. It must be tough for a girl out here, but... When you get back to town, you'll find it's a lot different. What you said before, is it true? What? About me being pretty. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't let it go to your head. I've known prettier, you, you know. But I'm all right for a girl. You're more than all right. You get some rest, huh? Rowdy, there's something. Here, would you look? Or... What'd you do that for? I just wanted to. I never did before. And besides, I like you. Well, uh, you're kind of young, you know. I know. But I like you, too. I don't mind you kissing me. I just had to try. You like it? I don't know. I missed them. I've got 40 head corralled for you. All good ones. Give you a nice fat profit. I think we more than done our share. I told you, I don't change. I wasted a whole day already and more. I can't afford to waste another one. Nobody asked you to. You never did intend to let us through, did you? Even if we got him, you're bound and determined to have this fight, ain't you? I don't move. All right, we come through anyway. You mean you'll try? All right. See you tomorrow around sunup. And we'll be waiting. Anybody want any more breakfast? Might as well load up good. No telling when you'll eat again. R.F. Roddy? Hmm? You think there'll be a fight? It's hard telling. Anybody needing rifles or ammunition, get them from Wishbone.
think Carson will fight? He'll fight, all right. You worried? Well, maybe. You're not, though, are you? Except for the herd. That's what I'd be worried about. Well, maybe the woman and the girl? Gosh, brought this on himself. Yeah? Well, I figure it takes two to make a fight. You blaming me? I'd just like to know what the grudge is between you two, that's all. None of your business. Well, I think it is if I'm gonna risk dying for it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's right. I don't... I don't get it, boss. We're all willing to back you up. Just want to know if it's worth it, that's all. I don't know. I don't know, maybe not. Some years back, I punched cattle for the K-Bar outfit down in the Nagadoches. Jed Carse was foreman then. Carse's son, Jake, the fellow I grew up with, Joe Misley. Myself, we all worked together. Carse was in his prime then. Tough as they come. He could still laugh then. Maybe because everybody feared him. We all did. Even his own son. You ever known anybody like that? Yeah, well, I guess everyone has at one time or another. Well, wasn't much to begin with. Argument over Joe Misley's going into town with Carr's son without Carr's say so. Carr's was really looking for was just another fight. He goaded Joe into it. He pushed him so hard, Joe finally made a mistake of going for a gun. Carr shot him in the belly. Took him two days to die. They called it legal. I'd been right in line when I found out about it. I come in after Carr's. He is unarmed, so I had to put aside my gun. We went at it. He beat me. Beat me almost to death. He would have killed me, too, if it hadn't been for his son. Jake hit him in the head, saved my life. I had to run away in the night. Cars must have taken it kind of hard, his son siding with you, huh? I guess the way Cars figures it, that fight was never finished. Now it's got to be. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll be riding with you, boss. Guess we all will be. It's all right with you. I hear him. Jed, let them through. For the sake of heaven, don't let there be killing. They tried to help us, Pa. Quit your yammering and get your rifle. You want me to fight them? Naturally. We'll need every gun. Well, I ain't gonna. Why not? Because I don't wanna. I ain't a man, Pa. I'm a girl, and I ain't supposed to fight. I told you! And I told you. I ain't Jake, Pa. I'm Willie. And that ain't my name, either. It's Wilhelmina. And I like it that way, so you better get used to it. Now, looky here, you. I don't, and besides, I don't want to fight these men. They're good men, maybe better than you. And they're right. You ought to let them go through, Pa. You keep your mouth shut right now, do you hear? Don't you ever talk like that to your Pa again. Jed, I know I can't stop you, but you're wrong. Even you must see that. Be quiet, woman. You're not going to change me. No, I never could. Nobody could. Not even the son you loved. The son you killed. Don't you ever say that again. Now get back there and be quiet. Both of you! All you gotta do is open the gate and let them through, Pa, please! Then I'll do it myself! Hold it, Ruddy. 
have it your way. Just you and me. There, Fist. This ain't no trick. Well, none of you men shoot. No trick. Just one bit of advice, boy. Don't stop so long as I'm breathing. Because I mean to kill you. Back after the mayors. Get him, boss. All right, let's get him. out of that canyon. I don't want to have to fight you again, but I'm coming through now. Yeah. Take your herd through, Mr. Favor. Don't bother put back the fences. We'll be leaving here, going back somewhere to our own place. 
Jim. You'll have a kitchen to be a wife in. Willie will have a town to be a girl in. Paul! Jed, God bless you. It's funny. You've wanted something for so long. Craved yourself, almost sick for it. Then all of a sudden you got it. There's only emptiness. Nothing to hate anymore. Nothing to hurt anymore. But there's just one more thing I gotta do. Just one. Jed, no! Don't! What's he gonna do? Karst, be careful! I guess you'd say that I killed Jake. Trying to make him ride you before he was ready. But I say you were the killer. You did it. No, Bob, don't! Go away, go away! I said it, it'd be him and me. I was right. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Kirst. I knew it was going to happen. Don't cry, Wilhelmina. Perhaps it is better so. Mrs. Kirst? Yes, thank you. The men will help us. There is nothing to keep you here now. You can go through. I'll never forget you. I won't forget you either, uh, Miss Wilhelmina. Maybe we'll meet up again sometime, huh? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll keep my eye out for the prettiest little filly in the town where I am. Well, none to like that in time. Bye. Oh, there's no sense in going any farther. We're never going to catch them in that country. Well, we can try. But my horse can't go much farther. Mine neither. And I ain't going to run into death running after two no-good outlaws. Uh, looks to me like the liquor's wearing off. Yeah, but we didn't let him break jail, and you did. If you want to go down in there looking for him and get picked off, you go ahead. I'm going home.
Comanches. Development, three principles of law. There is a lawyer. Fresh out of school. Looking so nice little town where he'd hang up the shingle. Stupid guy. Didn't even carry a gun. Let's see what else he's got worth taking. Wouldn't have much use for this. Too bad. Just about your size. I wonder what it'd be like to ride into town again in broad daylight. You ain't liable to find out. Not any time with a telegraph, anyway. One meal at a table. One night in a bed. What's got into you? I always heard you were tough. Just tired, I guess. Who ain't? Well, we better get going. Go ahead. I got an idea. Like what? Like being a lawyer. Huh? I'm going to be Mr. Mr. Jonathan Williams, an attorney at law. <laughs> you off your head. Maybe. What are you driving at? Every sheriff within a thousand miles has got the word on us. Any two men seen together between here and the border, they're going to look at them long and close. But as Jonathan Williams, I've got a free pass. I can go when I want to, where I want to. That's right, Cozy. You only forgot one thing. Where does that leave me? Find yourself a dead man. Your size. Maybe you forgot you'd still be in jail if it wasn't for me. When I busted out, I didn't have to take you with me. I could have left you there to hang. The only reason you busted me out is you needed somebody to do your thinking for you. How do you figure I'm going to make out with this bum arm? Well, you get along, you've got no choice. That's where you're wrong. Good afternoon. Gentlemen. My name's Favor. I've got a trail here just over the rise. Jonathan Williams, Mr. Favor, and I'm certainly glad to meet you. You know, you had me worried for a moment. I thought maybe you gentlemen were going to uh, hold me up. Uh, this is Pete Nolan, Roddy Yates. I suppose you wonder what I'm doing way out here. Uh, the thought did cross my mind. My card, sir. Mr. Jonathan Williams, attorney at law. At your service. You wouldn't just happen to know of a young up-and-coming town that could use a good attorney. I don't know of a young up-and-coming town around here anywhere. Well, it sounded like such a good idea back east, but well, now I'm beginning to wonder. Nobody told me how big it was. Well, uh, we'll hit Prairie Springs in two days. I don't know how up-and-coming it is. You're welcome to ride along with us if you want. Thank you very much. I was getting so lonesome, I was beginning to talk to the horses. Well, as long as they don't start talking back, you're all right. <laughs> well, I guess you gentlemen arrived just in time. <laughs> well, I 
sure don't know how anybody remembers all this law talk. It isn't hard if you study 10 or 12 hours a day. Well, what does this uh, amicus curiae mean? I can't go around giving away my trade secrets. Otherwise, how would I collect those fat fees that I hope to get? <laughs> well, if I ever get in a jam, I'll sure look you up. I'll give you a special rate. Well, say, I heard there was an Indian raiding party kicking up the hills a few miles back. You see any sign of them? No, if I had, it wouldn't be here. You see, I don't even carry a gun. Yeah, I sure wouldn't be caught out here without one. Well, I figure there's no sense in a man carrying a gun if he doesn't know how to handle it. Besides, I'm on the other side of the fence. Might have had trouble getting your message across to the Indians. How'd you get started in law, anyway? Really want to know? Yeah. Well, it uh, may sound a little silly putting it into words, but well, I feel that every man wants to do his part, make this country just a little better. And this is the way that I'm doing mine. Defending the innocent, helping to promote law and order. Little things like that. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a real fine ambition. Yeah, well, now I've made my little speech. You think I could uh, persuade Wishbone to give me seconds? Sure, just use some of that legal talk on him. <laughs> He's a real nice fellow, isn't he? Mm. Well, I guess I'd better settle up. Stipulating the admissibility uh, of a priori evidence. I admit it isn't much of a wagon, but it's the best I could afford. If you didn't see the Indians, but uh, they sure saw you. What do you mean? This little hole there is made by a nice, sharp Indian arrowhead. You sure? Seen a few of them. This is what happened to the wagon before I bought it. I wonder what happened to the people in it. Scalp, probably. Human life doesn't mean much out here, does it? Nobody wants to die here any more than they do back east. Only one difference. Out here, sometimes you don't have as much to say about it. Hey, you better get hitched up. We got some miles to put behind us before sundown. <laughs> Outfit. I am. Gil Faber. I'm from Prairie Springs. Just got word a couple of men busted jail at White's Junction. Might be headed this way. We haven't run into them. Any new men joined up with you last couple of days? Nope. Outside of Mr. Williams. Who's he? Lawyer. Been riding with us since yesterday. Well, the rest of my hands been with me at least six weeks. Lawyer? We could, uh, we could use one at Prairie Springs. You'd best talk to him, then. I think he's looking for a place to set up shop. I will. Oh, if you uh, meet up with any strangers, watch yourself. Word is one of them's left-handed. Gives him an edge if you ain't expecting it. Thanks. I'll remember that. Howdy. Yeah? I, uh... Here you're a lawyer, looking for a place to light. That's right. 
We got a right nice town, Prairie Springs. Go on, look it over. Maybe I will. Population's getting bigger all the time. 10 to 15 years ought to be a right sizable town. Pay you to get in on the ground floor. We'll be in there before sundown. And right in with us. Thank you, Mr. Favor. You uh, figure on letting your men come into town tonight? It'd be pretty hard keeping them out. Even if I wanted to. Well, you're the boss, ain't you? I gather we're not welcome. Uh, I don't mean you. It's your men. Folks in town just don't like a bunch of trail herders coming in, turning the place upside down. It's a funny thing about these towns. They don't like anything about my men, except the money they spend. Are you willing to be responsible for them? Look, Sheriff, I don't think they'll give you any trouble. If they do, that's your problem. They're all of age. What they do in their own time is none of my business. Well, all I can say is they better watch their step. Yeah. I'll uh, look for you tonight. Don't uh, judge the town by what this crowd does, huh? Oh, I understand, Sheriff. Men like that just don't know any better. Remember, anybody ends up in the junk stays there, as far as I'm concerned. Scarlet, you be sure and be back here by midnight with six men to lead the men on night herd. And drunk or sober, we hit the trail tomorrow at dawn. Well, it's a very stirring speech. Think it'll have any effect? No, nope. but I've done my duty. Or you won't need me. You go on. Just stay out of any poker game. Are you ever going to give up trying to fill inside straights? I'll make it one of these days. Why ain't you go? Seems you getting old, I guess. Besides, somebody's got to mind the store. I'm not getting old, and you know it. I'm just saving my money so I can have me a nest egg so I can quit this miserable job of cooking for that bunch of unruly, ungrateful baboons. You do it. That'll be the day we bury you. Extra deputies? Be busy enough without looking after deputies. Hey, the sheriff? Yeah. What about that lawyer? Isn't he with you? A win? Yeah, he'll be along any time now. Hello, Sheriff. Evening, Mr. Williams. We've been waiting for you. Oh, uh, Mr. Williams, this is Judge Sanders. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Fred Milton. How do you do? Milton. Mayor Watkins. Mayor? We understand you're looking for a good town to hang your shingle out in. Well, that's a general idea. Well, maybe we're prejudiced, but we think Prairie Springs is the best there is. Well, I'm surprised that you don't have a good lawyer. Well, we did have, but he died last year. Dissatisfied client? No, dissatisfied liver. Well, why don't we all go to the hotel, and we'll have supper, and we'll gang up on you? Fine, but first I'd like to get a room. And I want a bath, some clean clothes. I've been waiting for two weeks. The hotel is just a block up the street. We'll be looking for you. Fine. Nice to have met you, gentlemen. See you later. Chief. Well, what do you think? Seems like a smart enough fella. Harry? Nah, uh, he looked kind of young. But on the other hand, this isn't exactly the Supreme Court. <laughs> Come on. I'd like a room. 
Day, week, or month? I don't know yet. I'm more interested in a hot bath. That'll be 50 cents extra. How soon can I have it? As soon as I get the water heated. I'll call you when it's ready. Dollar and a half in advance. Do I look like the kind of a man that would uh, run out on a hotel bill? Well, everybody does to me. We don't exactly make for good relations, but on the other hand, there ain't no other hotel in town. Room four, upstairs to your right. Well, something else I can do for you? It's a key. We don't know good to have keys. There ain't no locks on the rooms. If you want yourself a room with a lock on it, get yourself a room in the jail. <laughs> and I'll get the water started. I bet you never drew to an inside street. I bet if more men did, I wouldn't have to work for a living. Well, just the same, I feel like some action. I'm gonna sit in over here. All right, you always remember how nice it was when you had it. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for a pleasant evening, Mr. Mayor. Oh, thank you. Uh, you don't have to say yes right now. We just wanted to give you some idea of what kind of business you could expect. Well, it's very interesting. I'm planning on laying over here for two days, so uh, I'll think it over. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, Mr. Williams. Good night, Judge. Good night. Till tomorrow, then. Thanks for the dinner. All right. I uh, didn't want to say anything about it in there, Mr. Williams. But if you need a loan to help you get started, my bank can help you out. Well, that's very kind of you. Well, I... Uh, I make loans on character, as well as collateral. <laughs> well, there won't be much peace and quiet around here tonight. That reminds me. I've got $2,000 in a suitcase upstairs. It's, uh, it's all the money I got in the world. I'd feel much better if it was in your bank. Why, certainly. Bring it around in the morning. Well, that is, provided I still have it in the morning. You know, this hotel doesn't have locks on any of its doors, and uh, as you can see, there is going to be quite a bit of drinking. I know it's after hours, but I would feel much safer if it were in your bank. Well, I don't see why not. I've got the keys with me. Thank you very much. It'll just take me a minute to get right. the money.
guess that does it. Better luck next time. That's what I keep telling myself. This is a little irregular, but anything to get a depositor. Thank you. There's a vacant office a couple of blocks from here. I could show it to you in the morning. I'll give you a receipt for your money. Sheriff. I just heard a shot up in the next block. I couldn't see anybody around, so I thought I'd better try to find you. Probably some drunken trail hand, but I'll take a look. I'm sure it was around here somewhere. I was standing on the hotel porch. I could hear it very clear. Hold it. Well, Sheriff, I was just looking for you. There's a dead man in there. Give me your gun. What for? Look, I found Give it to me. Now inside. I found this dead man. You told going... me. He's right over here. I heard this shot and I saw the light on. And... Well, wait a minute. You don't think I did this? Well, suppose you tell me who did. All I know is I heard this shot and when I came in here, somebody must have hit me on the head. When I came to, I saw him lying there. That's when I came after you. One shot. In the back. One empty chamber. What are you talking about? That hasn't been fired in a week. It's been fired within the hour. That's a lie. I wouldn't know. But you would. Somebody must have fired it. The, the same person who hit me on the head. Well, look, if you don't believe me, look, look at there. There's a, there's a lump the size of a walnut. And it's too bad Fred Milton didn't bust your head wide open. Fred Milton? 
He didn't do it. He was dead when I came in here. Empty your pockets. Now look, Sheriff, why aren't you... I said empty the... your pockets! Sure. Somebody must have planned it. Fred Milton was a friend of mine. You better get into that jail, mister, before I forget I'm wearing this badge. Come on. Lock the safe, will you, Mr. Williams? Go on. I understand you're holding one of my men for murder. That's right. I don't know what kind of a case you got against him, but I do know Yates well enough to know that he wouldn't murder anybody. One of our most respected citizens was found last night in his office at the bank with a bullet in his back. The safe was open. Your man was caught coming out. His gun had just been fired. He had bank money in his pocket. Any questions? Can I see him? Thanks. Well, boss, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. Believe me. Take it easy. Well, that's pretty hard to do when you're accused of murder. The sheriff told me about it. You get any ideas how this all happened? Oh, I wish I did. I... I told the sheriff all I know, but he won't believe me. I'm not the sheriff. I'll listen. Well, I was leaving town, riding back to camp, and I, I hear this shot. I, I look around, and I see this light in the bank. So I go over there, and the, the door's unlocked, so I walk in. Next thing I know, I'm coming to on the floor with a lump on the back of my head. And this fellow Milton's lying over there dead. So I run out to get the sheriff, and here he comes up the street with Williams. With Williams? Yeah. And uh, the sheriff, he checks my gun, and it's been fired. And I could smell the gunpowder on it, too. And there was some of the safe's money in my pocket. You never saw who hit you? Well, I won't. If I did, I sure wouldn't be here now. You believe me, don't you, boss? Sure. But I'm not the judge. I'm going to have to find out who framed you. Yeah, well, what about the herd? How long are you going to be able to hang around here trying to help me? As long as it takes. Try and get some sleep. What are you doing about finding the man who hit him? What do you suggest? Put an ad in the paper? Let's get something straight. I'm not going to stand around and see you railroad one of my men into the wrong end of a rope. Now, you get this straight, mister. Nobody's railroaded around here. I think your man killed Milton. I think it's as plain as the nose on your face. And if the judge thinks so, too, he's gonna hang. And if you and your trail hands try to stop it, he'll have company. The town will see to that. Is that clear? When are you gonna try him? Tomorrow. If it wasn't Sunday, we'd do it today. That you would. <laughs> favor. Saw you ride into town. Your boy got himself in quite a mess. So the sheriff was telling me. I haven't seen him since they locked him up. Is there any news? Only news is somebody hit him on the back of the head. Well, I'll certainly be glad to help in any way I can. Happy to offer my services. You just got yourself a client. Good. Let's go up to my room and see what we can think of. Uh, 
Right, isn't much of an alibi. An unknown man that he didn't see. He's got a lump in his head to back it up. Milton could have done that before he was shot. Mm. Can he account for where he was before it happened? He and Pete had a drink together at the saloon, and Pete says he left him to get in a poker game. Uh, that'll be easy to check. I appreciate what you're doing. Taking this on won't make you very popular around here. Well, I wouldn't think very much of myself if I let that stop me. Yeah, sure, I remember. Ain't easy to forget that bad a poker player. He'd stay on anything. Was he drunk when he left here? Drunk? No, I don't think so. Just broke. I hear they're gonna hang him tomorrow. You better get there early. You wouldn't want to miss it. I sure wouldn't. Fred Milton was a good man. Well, that didn't help much. Now they've got a motive. First, he gets cleaned out gambling. On the way back to camp, he sees Mr. Milton going into the bank and gets an idea how to get his bankroll back. You're making a pretty good case against him. I'm not making anything. It's already there. But it's always nice to know what you're up against. Good morning, Mr. Williams. Good morning. That was a terrible thing last night. Yes, it was. Must have happened right after he left you. Well, hardly ten minutes had passed. I was still on the hotel porch having a smoke when it happened. Oh, I'm sorry. Mayor Watkins is Gil Favor, trail boss of the herd the H was in. The sheriff tried to get you to keep your men out of town, Mr. Favor. I trust now you'll agree it would have been better. Your folks don't even wait for a trial, do they? Not in a case like this. Well, that isn't fair. And as a lawyer for Mr. Yates, I'd like... You're defending him? Well, every man is entitled to legal representation. I'm aware of that, Mr. Williams. Good day. Well, I'm not so sure I want to settle in this town anyway. Besides, I feel a little guilty about what happened. If I hadn't heard the shot and got hold of the sheriff, Gates wouldn't be in jail. Well, maybe that's one reason I want to help. Question is, what can we do? Unless we find that man. Did you ever stop to think maybe there never was a man? No. I told you all I know. What do you want me to do? Make up something? Take it easy. Quit telling me to take it easy. I'll take it easy when I leave this stinking town behind. All right, all right. Just thought there might be something you'd overlooked that could help us. We have to have some kind of a case for you in court. I always thought a man was innocent until proven guilty. How can I be proven guilty? I didn't do it. Let's go over it once more, just to be sure. All right. Like I told you before, I was riding out to camp. I hear this noise. It sounds kind of like a shot. Kind of like a shot. You've heard enough shots to know. Well, this wasn't the same. It was, it was kind of muffled. You notice that when you heard it? I haven't heard enough shots to uh, know the difference. Anything else? Uh, that's all I can think of. What about the rest of the men? And Pete's checking on it. So far, all of them are accounted for. Uh, I'm sorry I blew up. It doesn't look too good, does it? We'll keep trying. Mind if we sit down? No, if it's business, go ahead. As far as we know, all our men can account for their time last night. How about your people? Anybody have a grudge against Milton or owe him money? Lots of people owed him money. That was his business. But he never crowded anybody for it. You mean to tell me there's nobody in this whole town that you might not even have cause to suspect? If there was anybody I thought to do a thing like that to Fred Milton, I'd have run him out of town a long time ago. Anything else? No. But thanks for your cooperation.
Buy you a drink? Uh, no, thanks. Whiskey. Well, I might as well level with you. The way things stand now, the best lawyer in the country couldn't keep Yates from being convicted. And I'm probably far from the best. You've done everything you could. A miracle might still happen. But I'd hate to bet Yates' life on it. Officially, I... Well, I can't recommend that you take the law into your own hands. But speaking to you as a friend, that's the only way you're going to keep Yates from hanging tomorrow. No, no. And it won't be easy, because they'll be ready for you. I know that, too. So? He's not going to hang. How's it look? Not good. Anytime you're ready, you say the word. Tell him to stick around. We've got 24 hours yet. Can I talk to Rowdy? Might buck him up a little. Go ahead. Like a room. Day, we come on. Start with the day. It'll be a dollar and a half in advance. Oh, we'll we say when Mr. Williams comes in. Tell him I'm here, will you? Sure thing. Room three, upstairs to your right. Come for the hanging? Got any towels? Williams?
Come in. The clerk told me you checked in. I figured I ought to stick around overnight. Thought of anything? Nothing worth mentioning. Look, we're working together. If you have an idea, maybe I could help you with it. Well, I, I was wondering what kind of a man would deliberately frame an innocent man, let him get hanged for something he didn't do. I'd say uh, a man is trying to save his own neck. Everybody does. It's just a question of how far a man's willing to go to do it. It's easy to make the rules if it isn't your neck. Hmm. I'm not making any rules. I'm just wondering how that kind of a man feels when he has to look at himself in a mirror. Well, maybe you don't have to wonder any longer. It feels fine. Oh, it was you. And since you're so interested in the way that I feel, I'd like to say that I feel very smart. Much smarter than the penny ante cowhand. You're left-handed. Must be one of the two outlaws they're looking for. You're a real detective. You've got everything all figured out. Won't do you any good. It might. If you think that if Kid Tricker removing the bullets from this gun worked, take a closer look. You know all the tricks, don't you? I get along. It, it wouldn't do any good to try and make a deal with you, would it? They've either got to kill you or trust you. I don't trust anybody. How are you going to explain killing me? Well, I'll just tell them that uh, you wanted me to help you get him out of jail. We fought. You lost. Why didn't you kill Roddy in the first place instead of going through all this? If I'd have killed him, they'd be looking for the man that did it. If I'd left town, they'd become suspicious. This way, they think they got it all wrapped up. I can leave any time I want to. Nobody will think anything about it. Any more questions? It doesn't bother you a bit. Eating a man's food, drinking his liquor, and killing him in cold blood. It's the way it goes. Might as well get it over with, then. You know, I... Well, I kind of wish I didn't have to do this. Thanks. Coming from you is a compliment. Sorry. You might as well quit trying. It uh, won't fire without a firing pin. I figured you'd uh, be so pleased finding out that first kid trick you wouldn't bother to look for another one. Well, let's, uh, let's take a trip down to the jail. I do want to see the sheriff's face. I don't need it, thanks. I found one. simple when you start out. Get the herd to Abilene. Before you're halfway there, the cattle are the least of your worries. I know. Gil Favor, trail boss. Well, look at it this way. If you wasn't here, what else would you be doing? Wasting your time dancing, chasing after girls, buying fancy clothes. Cut it out, will you? 
Well, I'm just pointing out to you how lucky you are having a chance to learn a trade instead of frittering away your time enjoying yourself. Well, I'll be glad when we hit some green feed. They're looking kind of scrawny. Wait. Yeah, looks like we're getting company. It's a her, ain't it? Or is it just me? Oh. It ain't just you. I, I need help. M my father's hurt. We'll help you, man. Just what happened? The, the wagon rolled over. He, he broke his leg. I left him there to get help. How far is it? Well, I I've been riding for about two or three hours. How come it tip over? The, the team ran away down a long hill. There was a dry stream. I think I know where that is. Please, hurry. We'll find him. You stay here and get some rest. But I can't. You don't know the way. I'm a trail scout, ma'am. Finding the way is my business. We'll make better time without you. Pete, get the medicine kit and some splints. Rowdy, you take care of the lady. And join up. Bring some extra hands. But, but I want to go with you. Now, we'll find him. We'll rest up. <clears throat> Come on, this way, ma'am. This here is Wishbone. Uh, I didn't get your name, ma'am. Oh, Cartwright. Oh, this is Mrs. Cartwright, Wish. Miss. Oh, uh, excuse me, Miss Cartwright. Uh, I do. This, for what it's worth, name Mushy. Uh, how do you do? I do pretty good when Mr. Wishbone's got anything he wants done. Will you shut up? Uh, Miss Cartwright has had a little trouble, Wish. Uh, might be nice if you'd fix her up something to eat. Well, yes. What would you like? Oh, I, I couldn't. I'd do you some good. Well, perhaps a cup of tea. Tea? Oh, well, uh, we don't have any tea, man. Uh, coffee be all right? Oh, that, that will be fine. Uh, thank you. Coming right up. Well, all right, get moving. Just made some fresh back there. You all right? I, uh, Here's your uh, coffee, ma'am. Thank you. <clears throat> Go ahead and drink her down, ma'am. That'll put hair on your... You don't have to drink it if you don't want it. Oh, it's fine. It, uh, it, it just takes a little well, get, getting used to. Yeah, I know what you mean. Say, look, if you're a little tired, you can lie down in the back of the wagon there. Oh, no, no, I'm all right. Well, you don't have to worry about your father. Pete and the boss will take good care of us. Well, I want to go with you. Well, uh, sure, you got enough strength? Oh, quite sure. All right, I'll round up some of the rest of the men and come back for you. Begging your pardon, miss, but you look kind of beat up. Hadn't you ought to rest? You're very kind, but, but you see, my father's been injured, and I'd like to be with him. Well, now, that's the way a daughter ought to feel. Most of them just up and get married, and that's the last you ever see of them. So I've heard. However, father hasn't been faced with that problem. This should hold you till you get to a doctor. By the time we get to Three Forks, I won't need no doctor. It'll be as good as new. Can your daughter drive the wagon? What for? Only need one leg for the brake. Yeah. Uh, how does that feel? Apart from hurting like blazes, it feels great. I'll take a look at the wagon. Does your trail take you anywhere near Three Forks? We pass it. Might save you some trouble, then, if we went along with you. Save us trouble? Well, in case we had another accident. You wouldn't have to go so far to help us. We'd be right there with you. I see what you mean. He's 
going to be all right. I don't know how to thank you. Mr. Favor has asked us to ride along with him to Three Forks. Well, that, that's very kind of you, but, but you, you don't want to be hindered by us. Well, that's what your father was saying, but I talked him out of it. We'd be pleased to have you join us. Well, thank you. Well, we'd better see what we can do about your wagon. Fine man. Why don't you wash and get yourself fixed up? You look like something the cat had dragged in. And you could stand a, a dress that wasn't torn up to. Go on, get your bag. Now? No. Oh, uh, let me help you, ma'am. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to get some clean clothes. Uh, you, you, you. Where to? Um, over there. I'm gonna have to go back to the chuck wagon and get some tools to fix that wagon. I'm surprised you got this far with a load like that. Everything I own in the world is from that wagon. I can believe that. Where did your outfit start from? Texas. Where are you heading? Heading for Abilene. Must be kind of tough being away from your wife for so long. Most of the drovers ain't married. That's so. Well, what do you know about that? That's all right, ma'am. Oh, fine. You just let me know when you want me to take it back. Thank you. Dear Sophie, we are looking forward with great pleasure to seeing you in three forks and will be especially interested in hearing about your fiancé. From your description, he sounds like a fine man and a good catch. Your loving aunt, Ellen. Anytime you want to settle down, you can be a doctor. <laughs> I, I saw you carrying my daughter's luggage. Good job your wife wasn't around. She might have been jealous. That, that is, if you have a wife. Not yet. <laughs> So you're talking to the old man. Did he ask you the same question? Same question? Well, he asked me if I was married. That's the question. You don't think he's got something else in mind? I think that uh, it's going to be a long trip to Three Forks. <laughs> I wonder where this stage is heading to. Wherever it's going, I wish I was on it. Hey, Pete, what stage is that? Out of Three Forks, heading east. It wouldn't hurt you none to be a mite more friendly. You never give in, do you? All I said was... I know. You catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. But it's true. Why can't we just accept the fact? But I'm an old maid. It'll make things so much easier for both of us. Doggone it, you don't have to be. Here you are, and not another woman from miles around. For heaven's sakes, Paul, let me alone. 
All right, all right. Don't fly off the handle. There's a wheel holding up. It's all right so far. I sure feel sorry for her with a father like that. How old do you think she is, anyway? Gave up trying to guess women's ages a long time ago. Just always a chance you might guess right. <laughs> Remind me to stock up on tea when we get to Three Forks. Why? She's leaving us there. I don't want to get caught short again in case we run into any more females. Makes it look like I don't know my business. I, I don't mean this is an unkindness to wishbone, you understand? But if you fellas want to taste real cooking, you should come over to eat at our house sometime. Sophie's got so many recipes. Yes, sir. Fellas come from miles around to taste Sophie's cooking. Pa. It's only the gospel truth, then, Helen. I believe you, you know. Uh, first time I saw you, I said, there's a woman who's a wonderful cook. I, I think I'll go to help Wishbone. That's all right, ma'am. You're a guest. And um, I believe I'll, I'll rest then. Eats like a bird. You'd wonder how she keeps so healthy. Never a sick day in her life. Anyone care for a little poker while our food settles? I gotta check the herd. Well, maybe, maybe later on, huh? I get so tired of just playing poker with Sophie, but I, I can't wait to get into a real man's game again. And Sophie plays poker? There's no one else to play with. Just Sophie and me after our mother died. Just the two of us on that little ranch. I can't make a ranch go with an old man and a woman trying to run it all by themselves. Didn't you have any help? Did for a while, but then it got so that I couldn't afford to pay them. So they just drifted off. Can't ask a man to work for nothing, you know. What are you going to do when you get the three forks? Oh, I've got relatives there. I can always earn a meal. And they'll see to it that Sophie's took care of. Ah, she'll probably meet up with some upstanding young man and, and get married. Uh, there's a lot to her, that girl. Like they say, still waters run deep. Yeah. Well, back to work. Yeah, back to work. It was delicious. Oh, well, thank you, ma'am. It ain't nothing fancy, but it sure put meat on your bones. Mushy? I, um... I wish you'd teach me how to cook it sometime. Come on. Hope you enjoyed your supper. Oh, I, I did. Uh, despite what my father says, I'm, I'm not a good cook. <laughs> well, your father's quite a man. A little obvious. But he means well. Well, that's kind of important. Oh, don't, don't think I mean to criticize him, Mr. Nolan. He's trying very hard. and drew two cards, and then he raised me twice. That shows a man with plenty of confidence. He's probably got a, a full house, or maybe four of a kind. Quit talking and make your bed. Ah, science and skill, son, science and skill. 
Oh, it's a bit tricky. Yes, he's probably got me. But I couldn't sleep tonight unless I, I knew for sure. Your call. Four kings. Oh, good. But not good enough. Four aces. Well, as the preacher said, all contributions gratefully received. You haven't seen my last card yet. That's a pretty full deck with five aces, ain't it? Looks that way. How many more cards you got up your sleeve? Oh, you young whipper, sir. You call me a cheat, I? Make him take off his coat. I don't have to be insulted. If I was a younger man... Well, you ain't. So take that coat off or I'll take it off for you. Are you going to let them bully me like this? Why don't you go ahead and set their minds at ease? Nice way to, to treat a, an old man. I'm waiting for an apology. Don't hold your breath. Well, there's one thing I can't stand, and that's a sore loser. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, why don't we just call this a misdeal? Oh, why so? Well, uh, five aces, that's a bum deck. Why don't we just split the pot and call it a night? Oh, now, wait a minute. It ain't my fault that I'd four of them to... This way, everybody will uh, feel happy. All right, Mr. Uh, Cartwright, sir. Huh, good idea. Draw back your money, boy. Huh? I guess I'd better turn in. Here, take your money back, mister. Thanks. We better call it a night. You don't want to forget this. I wouldn't want you to jump to no wrong conclusions. <laughs> How could I do a thing like that just because you had a few aces in reserve? <laughs> but it's, it's just that I played with my daughter so long where it didn't matter. That it, it, it sort of became a habit. Well, Mr. Cartwright, that could be a very unhealthy habit. Oh, yeah. yeah. I must watch that. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I got a better idea. Why don't you just quit playing for money? You know, in case the habit's hard to break. You mean you don't trust me? Good night, sir. I come and smell it. Get a move on. Mr. Favor ain't gonna wait all day. I'm sorry, but I just can't face them at Three Forks. Please don't try to stop me. I'll write to you. Mr. Favor! Miss Mr. Favor! Mr. Favor, Sophie's car. What do you mean? Look at this. I found her in our tent. She must have lit out during the night. What does she mean? She can't face the issue. Oh, some fool notion she has that everybody looked down on her because she's an old maid. I never thought she felt that strong about it. Any idea what time she left? Well, she went to bed right after supper, so it could have been any time after that. Look, you've got, you've got to find her. Even if we do, we can't force her to come back. She, she doesn't mean what she says. She, she's just upset. Still got a right to go where she wants. You mean you let her wander around alone just because she's in a state? No telling what'll happen to her. Well, we'll find her and talk to her. But that's all we can do. I could pick up her trail, but it'd be quicker if I knew where she was going. You got any idea? No. She wouldn't just go off with nothing in mind. You sure she didn't say anything, give you any clue? Nothing at all. She just... Wait a minute. 
When that stage passed yesterday, she said something about wishing she was on it. They probably stayed overnight at the way station. I can catch up with him at the next one. But suppose she's not on it. Well, if her trail leads that way, it's a good bet she's on it. I appreciate this. Is there ever anything I can do for you? There is. You name it. Well, if she decides to come back, leave her alone, will you? I'm her father. I, I'm just trying to take care of her. Maybe you're trying too hard. Pete, you want me to send anybody with you? Well, I guess I can handle it. Look, I'm sorry I jumped on the old man, but I'm up to here with it. Oh, it might just do him some good. I wouldn't bet on it, but it just might. I'll see you. What did I hear about Miss Cartwright taking off? And Pete's going to find her. Oh, yeah? Well, if she wants to leave, why don't you just let her go? He will. If that's what she really wants, we just want to be sure. See that she's all right. Well, we sure walked into it and we hooked up with those two. You know, I read a book once that said that in China, you save anybody's life, you're responsible for them from then on. Makes them think twice about helping anybody. That's the smart people, the Chinese. Let's get rolling. <laughs> him up if she don't come back. It would have been better if you'd felt that way sooner. Yeah. About five minutes, folks. Oh, Miss Cartwright. Miss Cartwright. If you think you can force me into going back, you're mistaken. I hadn't planned on trying. Then why did you follow me, then? Well, we just want to know if you're all right. Well, I'm sorry to have inconvenienced you, but it isn't necessary. I'm quite all right. How are you? Your father told us why he didn't want to go into three forts. You think that's worth running away from? Well, there was another reason. You don't want to tell me what it was? I might as well. He'll know about it when he gets there anyway. Before I knew we were going to come here, I wrote my aunt a letter telling her about my fiancé, that I was engaged to be married. But it seemed a harmless little lie. It didn't hurt anybody. I never thought I'd ever see her. Does your father know? Oh, he wouldn't understand. He'd only laugh at me. Maybe you think it's funny, too, an, an old maid trying to impress somebody. Well, Ma'am, I don't think it's funny. But I don't think you ought to let it run your whole life. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm a coward, but, but I can't face them. I'd never live it down. Well, why do they have to know? Why can't you say you broke the engagement? Oh, they'd never believe me. They'd know I'd made it up. I'm sorry to have caused you so much trouble. Wait a minute. Now, supposing your fiancé, this fellow you were engaged to, you know, well, what if he was with you when you got there? I just told you. 
There never was any such person. But there could be long enough to back up your story. And then after I left with the herd, you could say anything you want. Say that uh, you broke it off or, or that I got killed in a stampede later. You have plenty of time to figure something out. Would you really do that? <laughs> Why not? What about Father? What would he think? If he's so glad to have you back, he'd think it's fine. All aboard, everybody. Well? We're ready to roll, miss. I I'll not be going with you, driver. Would you get my bag down, please? Let me her bag. My uh, fiance has decided to stay here. I'll get your horse. I'll, I'll get my bag. I'll be catching up with him tomorrow and have a real meal. Mr. Nolan. Oh, you ought to get used to calling me Pete. Sounds kind of funny calling the fellow you're engaged to, Mr. Will, will everybody have to know about what you're going to do? I don't see it's in anybody's business. You must think I'm an awful fool. Well, I think you did a fool thing. There's a difference. If I ever tried to add up all the foolish things I've done, I'd run plumb out of fingers and toes. <laughs> I've been thinking what you said about how to get rid of you. I think being killed in a stampede is brilliant. Oh. An old maid is usually an object of pity and ridicule. But a woman who's lost her fiancé, she's in a different category. She's treated with respect, like a widow. Do you really think people pay that much attention one way or the other? Small towns can be very cruel. You haven't changed your mind, have you? No, oh, ma'am. But don't you think ma'am sounds a little formal under the circumstances? <laughs> yeah, I guess it does. Well. You can sleep here by the fire. And I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Pete. Good night, Matt. Oh, good night, Sophie. <laughs> Check in with Mr. Favor. If you have any trouble with your paw, you let me know. Thank you. Hello, Pa. I'm glad you're back, Sophie. So am I. I guess I didn't realize how strong you feel about her. It's going to be all right now, Pa. I want to tell you about my fiance. About? About you? About your what? I'll tell you about it. Well, she decided to come back. Oh, I see. You must be pretty persuasive. 
you figure on laying over in three forks? No, nope, we've lost enough time as it is. It's all right. If I ride in with the cart rights, I promised her I would. Go ahead. I might have to be there a day or so. What for? I can't tell you. Well, is it all right with you? Go ahead and do whatever it is you get to do. Looks like you're set to do it anyway. There's no way to thank you for your kindness to us. And I'm sorry to have caused you so much trouble. Well, that's all right, ma'am. It gets kind of dull sometimes. It's nice to have a change. It's a very tactful way of putting it. Goodbye. Good luck, ma'am. I'll never forget the way you helped us. And I'll remember you too, young fellow. Every time I get five aces, I'll think of you. Well, uh, keep in touch, Pete. I'll see you. Go on, hit. <laughs> What kind of errand? How should I know? I'm only the boss. I busted my leg. Why else do you think I'd be using this crutch? Mm, it probably served you right. Ah, 15 years hasn't changed oh. you one bit. Oh. Oh. Sophie, oh. You look kind of peaked. I've got to fatten you up. <laughs> oh, Aunt Ellen, this is my uh, fiancé, uh, Mr. Nolan. Welcome to the family. Pleased to meet you. Took a long time, but I guess it was worth it. <laughs> We'd about given up on you. You gonna make a stand here and sweat? Or are you gonna offer your brother a drink? And you ain't changed neither in 15 ah. years. Come on. Julia? Here, sit here, Sam. Hi. Cousin Julia. Cousin Sophie. Hello there, Julia. Sam. Oh, how wonderful to see you both. Uh, this is my fiancé, uh, Mr. Nolan. Oh, you're the fella Sophia wrote to us about. The way she used to sit around daydreaming all the time. I have half a notion this was one of those dreams. Oh, he's real all right. How are the children? I I'm dying to see them. Fine. Sophie and I are just the same age. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Oh, it's quite all right. He knows how old I am. How's your husband, Julia? Drunk, probably. Uh -huh. Usually is by this time. Drunk! Well, if he is, he's out getting away from your nagging at him all the time. I'll say what I like in my own house. And if he don't like it, he can get out. Oh, things ain't changed, none I see. Makes me feel real at home. Well, I guess it's about time I was getting back. Back where? Oh, uh, P Pete's it's a scout for a cattle drive. We came along with him this far, but now he's got to go on to Sedalia. I'll walk out with well, you. Well, no, now, wait a minute. You can't be going that quick. I've been waiting for you to get here to give a party, and it won't be no fun without your fiancé. Besides, if I were you, I'd want to show him off. People won't think there's any such person unless they get to meet him. They'll just have to take my word for it. 
It seems to me a few cows could wait overnight. I'm sorry. No, your but... aunt's right. Cows can wait. Oh, that's the ticket. Get your luggage. I've got your rooms all ready for you. I was going to get a house. Oh, there's plenty of time for that. You stay right here. All right, all right. I'll give you a hand. Good. Well, you did it, but I've got to hand it to you. And at your age, too. If I were you, I'd marry him before I let him out of my sight. Why? I trust him. Well, you don't know Mary, you wouldn't be talking such foolishness. I know Pete. I thought I knew Jim till I married him. Ha! Huh. Right nice of you to stick around. Oh, I can always catch up with the dryer. The way they carried on in there. I can see now why you two cooped this up. Instead of slinking in like a whip pup, she's got her head up where it belongs. It's a general idea. Too bad it ain't for real. You gonna start that again? Excuse me, force a habit. You were a big success with Julie and Aunt Ellen. They were very impressed that I landed you. <laughs> well, they see me try to dance, they won't be so impressed. I'll meet you back at the house after I get my shave. I'd like to see some dress materials and some patterns, please. All right, right this way. Did you uh, have anything particular in mind? Yes, brown, please. Brown. No. Let me see something brighter. Yes, yes, I think you're right. You know, brown is too much for old ladies. There we are. Now, this is the uh, latest from Kansas City. Oh, they are lovely. And this? You're, uh, new here. Uh, we just got in today. Oh? I've been here 12 years. I started this place, uh, well, from nothing. Oh, it's a very nice door. Better than anything we had in Danton. Danton? Well, then you must be Miss Cartwright. <laughs> yes, your aunt's been expecting you. My name's Henry Fisher. I'm pleased to meet you. How, how do you do, Mr. Fisher? You're, uh... Aunt and your cousin do all the shopping here. Uh, could I see some patterns, please? Oh, yes, yes, of course. I'm afraid I can't help you much there. My wife used to handle this department. All the ladies used to ask her advice. She had very good taste. She passed away last year. I'm sorry. Now I just talk the patterns, and everybody makes their own selection. I think I like this one. Yes, that's very nice. At least it looks it to me. And I'd like six yards of this, please. Six yards of this. All right. Now, I hope you and your father like it here. Well, I'm sure we will. You know, there's quite a few uh, social activities going on right now. Church uh, suppers and uh, things like that. Perhaps you'd let me escort you to one. Well, that, that would be... Oh, there you are. I've been looking for you. But, oh, I see you've met my niece. Yes, yes, indeed. They're giving a party for her in the meeting hall tonight, in her honor. You'll come, won't you? Well, well, I'd be delighted. Good. Where's your fiancé? Oh, he's in the barber shop. Uh, how much do I owe you? Well, that'll be a dollar. Here you are. Thank you. See you tonight, Henry. Nice to have met you, Mr. Fisher. Nice to have met you. Morning, Ellen. Good morning, Sarah. Well, Mr. Fisher, seems very nice. Oh, yes, everybody likes Mr. Fisher. But he won't be on the market for long. Someone will snap him up now that his modern time is over. There now, don't you go making eyes at him. You've got your man. Oh, 
Oh, hi. Hmm? What are you doing? Getting ready for the party? We'll both be ready for tonight. Oh. Sorry, I didn't bring my Sunday clothes. Oh, that's all right. Is there anything wrong? No. Well, everything's fine. Well, I'll give me a room at the hotel. I just want to be sure everything was going along all right. to meet you both. You must join our sewing circle. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Excuse me, I've got to start the music box. Well, hello, Henry. Uh, Mrs. Ferguson. Miss Carthright. Mr. Fisher. Mr. Nolan, Sophie's fiance. Congratulations. Thanks. Everybody dance. Well, join the dance and then we don't keep the ladies waiting. Oh, yes. Excuse me. Where'd you meet him? Uh, this afternoon. Uh, he, he runs the Emporium. Poor man. His wife died last year. And he's so lonely. Well, why don't you two dance while you've got the chance? <laughs> don't say I didn't warn you. before I break your foot. Oh, why don't you finish the dance with Mr. Fisher? Well, I'd be delighted. Mr. Nolan shouldn't have forced you to dance with me. Well, it was very generous of him. He's a very lucky man. Thank you. Oh, and thank you, sir. Come on, let's go outside. It's nice. Now, don't be gone too long, you two. Sparking at her age. Well, better late than never. That's what I always say, Ellen. <laughs> but what is it you wanted to tell me? You've got a problem, haven't you? What do you mean? Mr. Fisher. You like him. He likes you. Well, we hardly know each other. Been watching you both. You act like a couple school kids. Look, we're friends. You can level with me. You do like him, don't you? He's very gentle, and he seems to need someone to take care of him. I suppose that's a silly way to feel at my age. Oh, I don't think so at all. The question is, what are we going to do about it? I don't understand. Well, that deal we had where I was going to go away, and in a couple of months you'd hear I got killed. It won't work now. It'd take too long. It's got to be quick. I, I don't see him. I got an idea. Be rough, but it'll be quick. What is it? Come on, I'll tell you. The thing I miss those weeks on the trail was a good sociable poker game. Well, um... 
You may be able to sneak out later and get one up tonight, huh? Oh, count me in. I don't play very good, but I sure enjoy a game. Sure you can handle it. I try. Are you going to talk to him? I'll get the punch. Oh, Pete. Thank you for everything. It's a, a lovely party. Yes. Oh, how's your dress coming along? Oh, fine. I like the material very much. I think it'll be very good coming. I've been looking for you. I, I was just talking to Mr. Fisher. Well, I'm the one you're engaged to. Suppose you stick to talking to me. Well, I, uh, I assure you, Mr. Nolan, there was nothing wrong. <laughs> Here. Oh. You clumsy fool, watch what you're doing. Now, see here, Mr. Nolan. Uh, you keep out of this. You have no right to talk to Mr. Fisher that way. Shut up! <gasps> oh. 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 I could have an apologize to the lady. I don't want an apology. I never want to see him again. <laughs> you mean that? I certainly do. Well, you heard what the lady said. Take your home. Thank you. Like that. Good riddance. 